Zachary Horowitz was a D-list actor who refused to let his dreams of making it big in Hollywood fade away, choosing instead to pursue them with unbridled ambition. An ambition that eventually led to a staggering $227 million fraud perpetrated against Hollywood investors. How did this relatively unknown actor manage to pull off such a massive scheme? And what was it about him that convinced Hollywood's elite to trust him with their money? Zachary Horowitz grew up in Tampa, Florida, and moved to Indiana after his first year in high school. He initially set his sights on becoming a professional football player, playing for the Indiana Hoosiers during college, and coming tantalizingly close to turning pro. Unfortunately, a series of injuries put an end to his football dreams, and he was forced to pivot to a new career path. In 2011, Zach Horowitz and his girlfriend Mallory Hagedorn were fresh graduates from Indiana University filled with ambition and dreams for their future. Zach had a passion for health and wellness, and his ultimate goal was to open up a juice bar that could provide healthy and nutritious options to the community. His excitement for this venture was contagious, and he convinced Mallory to move to Chicago with him to make his dream a reality. Upon arriving in Chicago, Zach was determined to make his juice bar, Fuel, a success. However, he soon discovered a new passion that was calling out to him, the world of theater and comedy. Zach's natural talent and passion for performing led him to start participating in local theater and comedy shows, and he quickly fell in love with this new hobby. Unfortunately, despite the enthusiasm and dedication Zach and his team had towards Fuel, the shop's Yelp reviews indicated that it was often closed during business hours. It was clear that Zach's attention was shifting away from the juice bar and towards his newfound passion. Coincidentally, Zach received an email from Howard Schultz, the billionaire founder of Starbucks. In the email, Schultz expressed his admiration for Zach's entrepreneurial skills and offered him a job in his venture capital firm, Mavron Schultz. Zach was thrilled with the opportunity and was offered a position in Los Angeles where he would lead Mavron's entrepreneur outreach program. The new job would be a significant change for Zach and his team, but it would also be an opportunity for him to learn from some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the industry and take his career to new heights. Zach and Mallory couldn't resist the opportunity that Howard Schultz had offered, and they decided to leave everything behind in Chicago and move to Los Angeles. By mid-2012, the couple had settled into their new lives in L.A. Zach was fully engrossed in his job at Mavron, while Mallory was pursuing her career as a hairstylist. Zach's job was taking over his life. He was always on the go, responding to emails and texts from Howard Schultz and rushing off to meetings. The couple had become so close to the billionaire that he even started to email Mallory directly. Despite the excitement of working for such a successful businessman, Mallory noticed that Zach was struggling to cope with the demands of his job. She noticed that he was drinking more heavily than usual and started to take Adderall and Xanax every day. What Mallory didn't know was that Zach's job at Mavron was not what it seemed. In reality, he had never met Howard Schultz and he was not working in the Mavron offices as he had led her to believe. The job offer and the subsequent communications from Howard Schultz were all part of an elaborate lie that Zack had constructed. As time passed, it became increasingly clear to Mallory that something was not right. She began to investigate Zack's job at Mavron, and discovered that he had been faking his position and communicating with a fake email address that he had created. The discovery left Mallory feeling betrayed and shocked, and she confronted Zach about his deceit. While it was a shock for Mallory to learn that Zach had been faking his job at Mavron, what she didn't know was the extent of his deception. 
Zack had gone to great lengths to make the ruse believable. The elaborate scheme had one ultimate goal, to fulfill Zack's dream of becoming a movie star in Hollywood. He knew that making it in the industry was all about networking, so he adopted the stage name Zack Avery and began attending auditions and events. However, his lack of natural acting talent made it difficult for him to gain traction in the industry. Zack's persistence, however, paid off when he met two filmmaker brothers, Julio and Diego Hallis, at a dinner. The Hallis brothers were in their 20s and had already made a few short films together, but were struggling to secure funding for bigger projects. Zack saw this as an opportunity to make himself valuable to the Hallis brothers and told them about his supposed business connections with Howard Schultz. Impressed by Zack's supposed connections, the trio decided to start their own production company, One in NMM or One in a Million Productions. Their goal was to produce high-concept genre films with an edgy and unique approach to storytelling. In 2013, a partnership was announced between One in MM and Abri Hay Entertainment, a Miami-based distribution company co-owned by Gustavo Montan, a seasoned executive with almost 30 years of experience at 20th Century Fox and who held the position of vice president of TV distribution in Latin America. While Zach was in Los Angeles, he maintained close ties with his college buddies, Jacob Wonderland, Joseph D.L. Terrace, and Matthew Swear, who were working entry-level positions at two of the world's largest investment banking firms, J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley. In 2014, Zach presented his friend Jacob with an investment opportunity. Zach managed to convince his friend Jacob to lend him $37,000 for an investment opportunity that he claimed would result in a guaranteed 30 to 40% return within a quarter. He boasted about his connections with Howard Schultz, his existing deals with HBO and Netflix, and his involvement with one in Millimere. Zach pitched them his idea explaining that he needed money to acquire distribution rights for low-budget English language films, which he would then sell to HBO, Netflix, and Sony for distribution in Latin America. To reassure them, he even showed them a 20-page license agreement signed by a Netflix executive, claiming that it was a sure thing. Unfortunately, the agreement was entirely fabricated. Despite this, Jacob, Joseph, and Matthew trusted Zach and even convinced their family, friends, and associates to lend a total of $1 million to one in MMME to purchase the rights to seven movies that were supposedly licensed to HBO and Sony. In October of 2014, Zach and Mallory had a luxurious wedding ceremony at the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills. The opulence of the occasion ignited Zack's appetite for a lavish lifestyle, and to maintain the influx of money, he solicited new investors by boasting about his connections with Mavron, HBO, and Netflix, while guaranteeing enormous profits. Zack's modus operandi was to secure new investors and use their funds to repay existing loans. Unbeknownst to his investors, Zack was operating a Ponzi scheme. In mid-2015, he sent his college buddies an annual report that highlighted how one in million had acquired and distributed 49 films, claiming that they had not incurred any losses in the process. Over the following five years, one in million capital would funnel a staggering 490 million in loans to Zack. Numerous investors, without much investing experience, were lured by the prospect of guaranteed returns in the glitzy film industry. Despite Zack's prompt repayment of his friends at one in million, he indulged in a lavish lifestyle, which included purchasing a six million Beverly Wood home with a screening room and a 1,000 bottle wine cellar, and spending 2.5 million dollars on celebrity interior design. He spent more than $600,000 on cars, using a significant portion of investor funds to finance his extravagant lifestyle, 
while projecting an image of success to attract more investors and bankroll movies. In August 2016, the Hollis brothers released a fan film titled The Laughing Man, about the comic book villain Joker. In this origin story film, Zack plays the main character, which has amassed more than 6 million views on YouTube, receiving praise from fans who even consider it better than some major studio productions. In March 2017, Romic Yegnazari, a mutual friend of Romac and Jim Russell, suggested they seize a lucrative investment opportunity. Romac, a mortgage broker, had been referred to Zach Hates by a mutual friend who had already invested in his projects and was eager for them to join. Zach charmed Jim, explaining how he planned to utilize Jim's funds to purchase the rights to low-budget movies, subsequently selling them to HBO for distribution in Latin America. He promised to repay Jim within six months, along with a 15% profit. Jim, an experienced businessman, found the proposal too good to be true and asked what would happen if HBO declined to buy a film. Zack reassured him that HBO had never backed out before and he had contracts in place. Jim, still skeptical, consulted with his business partner, Romick, who believed that Zack's refusal to provide financials was a sign that he didn't need the money. To assuage Jim's doubts, Romick showed him emails that he had exchanged directly with HBO, which somewhat alleviated Jim's concerns. Over the next two years, Jim and his partners loaned Zach Hates a total of $80 million. It was later discovered that all the emails from HBO were forged by Zach. In August of 2017, Deadline reported that One in MM had successfully raised $5 million to fund the production of sci-fi and horror movies. In September of the same year, Zach and Mallory had their first child, Jackson. It remains unclear how much Mallory knew about One in MM, or if she was ever informed of the truth about Maveron. However, Zach had now built their entire life together, with a newborn on the way and the Ponzi scheme looming over them. In 2017, Zach also had a supporting role in the Diego Chaz-directed time travel thriller Curva. The film starred Lindsay Fonseca, known for her recurring roles in several prominent TV shows and featured a cameo from Linda Hamilton. During 2018, Zach secured supporting roles in several films, such as The White Crow, directed by Ray Fiennes and Farming. Additionally, he began filming the neo-noir thriller Last Moment of Clarity, where he landed his first leading role in a feature-length film alongside Kate Beckinsale. In this movie, he portrayed a man on the run from the mob who starts suspecting that his murdered girlfriend might still be alive. The film also starred Samara Weaving and Brian Cox. Zack's successful performance in Last Moment of Clarity allowed him to work with well-known actors and receive recognition from mainstream audiences, bringing him closer to achieving his dream of becoming a Hollywood star. In November 2019, Zack suddenly stopped repaying his investors after successfully running his Ponzi scheme for five years without any issues. He had previously repaid his loans with interest on time and had collected a total of $690 million before the scheme collapsed. As his payments came to a halt, Zach's friends at 19MM began to grow increasingly concerned. Jim Russell reached out to Zach to inquire about the situation and eventually sought legal assistance when he suspected something was amiss. In an attempt to quell his investors' concerns, Zach tried to shift the blame onto Netflix and HBO, claiming that they were responsible for the delayed payments. However, the situation continued to escalate, and the truth about his Ponzi scheme began to unravel. Zach claimed that multiple vendors working with HBO, not just MM, were experiencing payment delays. 
He advised his investors against reaching out to HBO or Netflix to avoid causing further complications. As the investors in Chicago grew increasingly impatient, Zack resorted to one of his previous tricks, impersonating Netflix executives to fabricate emails and exchanges regarding the late payments. He presented these fraudulent emails to his investors as proof that the issue was not his fault. March 2020 was a difficult time for many people worldwide due to the uncertainty and fear brought on by the pandemic. This was also the case for Mallory Horowitz, who was not only dealing with the pandemic, but also trying to sell their house quickly as their family was facing financial difficulties. Mallory had recently become pregnant for the second time and had left her job as a celebrity hairstylist at Zach's urging to focus on raising their children. Marty Kaplan, a Chicago investor who was a friend of Zach's college buddy Joseph D.L. Terrace, was the first investor to file a lawsuit against Zach. Marty and Joseph were both at risk of losing a substantial portion of their family's funds. In December 2020, the Kaplan family's attorney issued a subpoena to Netflix, seeking records of its payments to one Nyan mm or the distribution rights of 20 films. In response, Netflix claimed to have no record of conducting business with the Capitol. The Kaplan's legal representative insisted on a more thorough search and provided a license agreement between Netflix and one NMM, as well as an email exchange between Zach Horowitz and a Netflix executive. These fraudulent contracts and emails raised concerns that prompted a real lawyer from Netflix to inquire about the source of the documents. Netflix sent him a cease and desist letter, and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SCC, was alerted of the apparent Ponzi scheme. The SEC obtained a warrant to search Zach's financial records, along with those of WNMM. In March 2020, Zach's three original victims, Jacob Woodland, Joseph Dalteris, and Matthew Swear, reported him to the FBI. Fast forward to April 6, 2021, when the FBI raided the Horowitz's six million Beverly Wood home. At the age of 34, Zach Horowitz was arrested for securities mail and wire fraud, aggravated identity theft, and money laundering. Mallory, his wife, filed for a divorce on the same day. It's worth noting that the FBI has not accused anyone else of wrongdoing. The SEC seized Zach's assets, but his personal bank account had just over $3,000 in it, and the one in MM accounts were almost empty. Zach was released on a $1 million bond on February 14, 2020, but he was later sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. Additionally, he was ordered to pay over $230 million in restitution. At the sentencing, it was revealed that Zach had defrauded over 250 investors, including some of his closest friends and their families. Victims spoke about how multiple generations of families had lost all their money, with some having to file for bankruptcy and relying on food stamps and unemployment benefits to survive. This was the story of Zach Avery, a cautionary tale of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the consequences of greed.